started with Mardo. <laughs> we take this giant like rape van, get in the van. You know, the whole time we're talking about this trip and what to expect. So CJ's putting this image in our mind of what we're gonna see and what we're gonna do. But we go to this beach in the middle of nowhere. We've gone through basically no civilization. We sit there waiting for about 30 minutes and this old truck pulls up with a wooden panga on the back. So we load three days worth of gear on this giant little boat and it's packed to the brim. Uh, a ride, 45 minutes to the bigger sports fishing boat. It's parked out in the middle of the bay. like this, you're kind of on them one minute and then the next minute they're all gone. It's almost like you'd see it and try to dive on it and then you'd miss it somehow just because the current carried you in a different direction. So we're still doing 65 drops every time and pretty much exhausted. So I understand that people go on these trips and they want to shoot massive uh, Kubera, massive Wahoo, uh, you know, a lifetime golf grouper. I go down and I just like to dive. I like to be under the water. I think free diving is uh, is uh, incredible. It's, it's amazing experience to understand yourself and the what the body is capable of. And it, the body will break many times before the mind does. And to be a successful spear fisherman or even a successful free diver is to master your own mind and have the ability to control what the body is uh, being put through. You're going to need the guys to back you up, whether they're grabbing their gun, shooting that fish, keeping the sharks off, or helping you up because you went too deep and you're not going to make it the last 10 feet, which I've been there. Yeah. More often than not, you were there for a second shot for other people. Which I'm, which I'm cool with. I'm always, I'll shoot the last fish. Yeah. I'd rather help guys land fish first, second, third, fourth. So, you'll always get a fish. There will always yeah. be that chance. We had found a spot. Right? Hey, man, take, take a look. Like, tell me what's down there. And I remember going down and seeing like 30 or 40 grouper. And they were all staring at me like, you know, I, like I would imagine like a celebrity in New York. Like just kind of just, <laughs> this is not how this is, works. Like you guys should be like swimming away. This, I thought it was the coolest thing. Just the biggest group I'd seen, the most number of, I mean, every which way you turn them in the water. And then you had huge Kubera, which I didn't even realize yeah. until I'm like, those are Kubera, those are, those are grouper. They're everywhere. I had no idea even to pull trigger. I completely forgot. I was like just in, in totally enthralled with what I was seeing that I came up and you, and you were like, were there fish? I'm like, yeah, tons. You were like, did you shoot them? I was like, no, not even close. I didn't even, I didn't even think about it. So that was my first dive, and I was like, this is gonna be an awesome fucking trip. This is gonna be, this is gonna be <laughs> fucking incredible. Ron and CJ's like, you gotta grab a gun, you gotta come in here. And I was like, oh shit, okay. Because at that point, I don't know if we had any real guns. I think we all had just big guns. Mm -hmm. So I grabbed my stuff. I just grabbed a gun, jumped in, swam over, and didn't even have a breathe up and dove. And I didn't realize the fish was deeper than it was. And so I didn't equalize. So that's how I ended up popping my ear drum day two on a second shot for Tom's monster wahoo. I was just like, we gotta get this fish. Tom's so stoked, he's losing his mind on the surface. Troll, <laughs> troll baby just freaking out. Ah, ah. Did you just call him Troll Baby? <laughs> Bob, he's no grumbling. So we had a big fish on the boat. We had an official big fish. Thomas was really pumped. I think that gets everybody's monkey off the back. You gotta get a fish early uh, to kind of break the ice per se. I think a lot of guys put that pressure on themselves. And then they can really, and you see them start to dive more relaxed and start to enjoy the day. The sea lions, okay, so not on this one, but the sea lions did come after us and you were like, we gotta get in the boat. I've seen a sea lion come after a, a wounded fish or a fish that's on a spear before and try to, you know, take an easy pickings. But I had never seen a sea lion casually like coast and swim and try to like get these wahoo comfortable with it and then dart and, and, and really shoot after these wahoo. I mean, these wahoo weren't shot, they weren't nicked, they weren't injured. Uh, these were free swimming wahoos and I was actively watching a sea lion try to hunt a wahoo. And I don't know if you shoot a, a sea lion, if you go hand to hand with them, I don't know. That's like, no, we'll find out next time. <laughs> then CJ and I were down 
kind of doing our thing, we came across the absolute, like, the horde of the big dogs. And there was like four or five, I'm telling CJ, I'm telling him, I've never seen Cooper this big, and he sees him and he's like, okay, this is, we're on. So I took another dive, and one of these groupers just spun off the group, came up, and at like 45 feet, he came to check me out as I checked him out. And I had already shot a, a, a golf grouper and that morning. So I, in my head, I'm like, well, I shot one. Maybe one of the other guys can get on this big fish. Not, I didn't full well know the size of that grouper at the time until I came up to the surface and CJ's, usually he'll get a little, he'll get a little animated with other guys, but he was getting animated with me. So I was like, oh, what's going on here? And you're like, dude, what the hell are you doing? This is a, it's a fucking, you know, it's a, it's a fucking all time grouper. Like, well, I was like, it wasn't that big. I mean, he's like, no, no, they're all that big. That's why you couldn't tell. He's like, that's a hundred plus. Easily a hundred, hundred plus. And you were at 45 feet, you didn't, you didn't even have to do anything. So I carried that with me for the next, <laughs> the next five or six days through the trip, you know, half the size of me, maybe a little bit bigger. That's also something that I learned. So if it's, if it's there, don't wait for another breathe up. If you can get it, you gotta get it. You have to harvest it. So I was, we saw, I saw this big grouper and I was getting ready for my breathe up. I was just ready to, to duck kick down. And all of a sudden here comes little Tommy. <laughs> just, just delining it for the group round. Like, <laughs> and I knew he knew that I was, I was breathing up. And I asked him afterwards. And he comes up and he had stoned it, which was an epic shot. I mean, purely stoned it from the bottom all the way up. And it was a big fish. And it, it would, we would have totally needed to put another shot in. You saw me breathing up. I, you know, I saw this goddamn grouper, and you know I was breathing up. He's like, "Oh yeah, for sure." I cut mine short to get down there. I was like, <laughs> yeah. All right, that's cool. And at that point, I was like. You got your fish, you deal with it. I'm gonna go down and I shot. I just, whatever I could find, I, I shot one, I unicorned it. So then we both were up, we were both cleaning our fish. It was nice, cause we were both like, that was awesome. And he brought it to the boat. And I remember the, uh, the boat guys being like, real fish, real kill, on the real gun, none of the float ones. I was like, mm -hmm. we're not using the float ones anymore. <laughs> yeah. These like Mexican guys are like, I bring my fish to the boat and they're like, hey, nice job, we can go, it looks good. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. And then they, Tommy brings his fish and then they're like, oh yeah respect. And I was like, damn, I just totally, I, it doesn't matter the size of the fish. It has to be on a real gun. that clear water and bigger fish and so for the next three and a half hours we chased the school and we just fully committed to it. We even had a deadline that we had to get in the boat and get back because I needed to get out of Mexico mm -hmm. to get on to a next trip. So I remember coming out of the water at one point and it was the most tired I've ever been in spear fishing. One of the most tired I've ever been athletically. But I've swam for miles. I've swam for two hours straight. I've shot multiple times taking 50 foot dives with no breathe up just because these guys pop up. And so we get back in the water one last time, end of the day, end of the end of the trip, and we see him again, we all miss. And CJ's like, fellas, look, no shame to us. We've definitely given it a try, but we've we've got to uh, we gotta get back on the boat. We gotta get back out here. I'm like, I know. I'm thinking, I know. I was waiting for somebody to call it because I'm pretty beat and I know Kevin was pretty beat. Sure enough, as we turn around to get to the boat, there are these water and they're coming right at us and under us. Oh my God damn it. I, in my head, I'm like, this is like, final play of the state championship game. <laughs> Fumble recovery. You know, and I'm like, fuck, this is, this, we're, I'm, I was like, I'm putting, I'm putting, I'm putting steel in this fish. So at that point, I'm like, CJ and you, Kevin, you guys are doing your thing. I'm picking a fish, we're going for it. There was one that came beneath me. No idea how deep it was. 
took a half a breath, as much of a breath as I could, and then just punched it. And I just kept going and going and going and going and going. It's close. You never can be too close, is what I learned. So I swam onto this fish until I could see the stripes, and then I shot him, and he was still so far away that, that the shot just clipped him under the spine, and he took off. And I ended up checking my watch after, and it was like, it was like 40, 46 feet was where I shot, shot him. And he took off and I went to the surface. The boat was there and everybody was pumped. I'm like, where's the float? Like, which way? And they're like, it's over there, way over there. And I ended up swimming for like another 10 or 12 minutes. There. I ended up finding this fish and he's tombstoning it at one after the bottom. I'm like, damn, this, this is weird. I'm like, I wasn't really sure. I didn't really make sense that it was so far away. So. We get another gun, CJ is, uh, he's got the gun, he's gonna make the dive. I'm like, no, 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 you take the buoy, I am dealing the death shot on this. So I end up taking another dive, that one was the 52, and that's when I realized the, the, the sheer size of the fish, put it right through the skull, knew the fish was landing, we brought it up, and that's when we were all like, oh man, this is like a, this is serious, this is serious fish, and that whole school was, a, a, was huge. So that made sense why we missed two do half a dozen, dozen shots. We had a, a chef on the boat cooking everything that we shot, so pretty much from day one, you know, we're loading up on fish first day we get in the water. So the chef just starts cooking right away when we put the fish on board, so by the time we get to one o'clock, uh, the chef already has, you know, our first meals prepped and he's cooking each fish we shoot a different way. You know, for the Wahoos and the Yellowtail, we're making sashimi. He's making it in three different ways, all amazing. So when we're done shooting fish, pretty much we're taking a break. We're just filling up on incredible meals. So if we go back and we talk about first day, I really didn't anticipate that we were gonna shoot anything crazy. Um, I just wanted it to be a warm-up day for you guys. And then on day three, that's when we finally got the big groupers. Uh, we went back uh, to the reef and uh, Cooper ended up shooting a really nice one. I was yelling at him. I was like, hey, Cooper, come here and shoot this Kubera, right? There was like two Kuberas in the school of 60 of them, right? The other ones were all, you know, 20, 30 pound cookie cutters. And there was a couple nice, you know, I think there was two of them, uh, like in that 45, 50 pound range. So he started swimming over towards me and I saw him make the drop. Cooper makes the drop on this, on this Kubera and he turns off. And I remember thinking in my head, there better be something good down there, <laughs> right? In, in my head, I thought, you know, there has to be something better than this 40 pound Kubera that's giving him an easy shot to kill. Uh, so there better be something good. And, and I knew it was something good when I heard the shaft. You can hear that. Uh, I knew he hit something solid. And then immediately after, Boom, 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 boom. And so he's pulling on the line. And uh, I remember at one point in time, he just looked over at me and he was just eyes wide open, just help, right? Help me with this. And so I grabbed the line um, and he hit the surface. And it wasn't long after. I mean, I hit the surface with the fish afterwards. Um, Tommy was right above him. Uh, so when he hit the surface, Tommy was doing the safety. I was working on the fish and I felt like it was almost simultaneously as soon as I hit the surface and was able to, you know, get help from Cooper also now to start pulling on this fish, that stove was dropping down and just lights out. I mean, pinwheeled coming up immediately after that. It was, it was awesome. Cooper didn't have the trophy fish from day one. You know, he had watched everyone else land Oahu day two, but he kept his, kept his chin up and he ended up with the fish of the trip. I mean, the, the, the question we have is, whose fish was, was cooler? Was it, was it Tommy's big wahoo or was it, was it Cooper's uh, broomtail? And you know, I, we'll let you guys decide. I can tell you this, from the pictures of it on the cutting board, it took up a, it was longer than a, than a 65 inch cutting board. So it was a big fish. <laughs> Look at this right here. This is how you know it's a big one. <laughs> <laughs>